Welcome to the World of Canon, a television series that gripped audiences with its compelling storytelling and unforgettable characters. This crime drama, set against the backdrop of the early 70 seconds, follows the exploits of Frank Cannon, a tough and determined private investigator. As the series unfolds, Cannon's sharp wit and keen investigative skills take center stage, navigating through a myriad of cases that range from perplexing mysteries to gripping suspense. The show resonates with many viewers for its ability to capture the essence of detective work, painting a vivid picture of a time when solving crimes meant relying on instincts and intellect rather than the technology we have today. One can't help but ponder which character left the most lasting impression. Was it Cannon himself, with his distinct blend of charm and dogged determination, or perhaps one of the supporting roles that added depth and intrigue to each episode? Amongst the various thrilling moments and engaging storylines, there's often that one scene or episode that etches itself into the memory, leaving a lasting impact. Whether it's a thrilling chase, a cleverly unraveled mystery, or a poignant character moment, Canon had its fair share of gripping sequences that linger in the minds of its audience. We're curious, was there a particular scene or character that struck a chord with you, leaving a lasting impression? Do you have a cherished memory or personal experience related to canon? Maybe it was watching the show with friends or family, discussing theories about the latest case, or the excitement of eagerly awaiting each new episode. We'd love to hear your stories and memories in the comments below. Engage with us and share your thoughts as we delve into the world of canon and celebrate the impact it had on viewers then and now. Share your favorite moments, discuss beloved characters, and reminisce about this timeless series that continues to captivate audiences. In the series Canon, the license plate for Frank Cannon's car, often dubbed the Cannonmobile, alternated between 963 XUJ and 825 DQI. This car became somewhat of a signature for the character throughout the show. Meanwhile, the main title and background music featured the canon melody predominantly played by tuba and trombones, hinting at Frank Cannon's size. These elements added depth to the show's characterization. The pilot of the series aired in March, featuring a two-hour episode with different opening graphics. This pilot had no cast listing or title voiceover, setting a unique tone for the series. This setup was a departure from the regular format, but laid the groundwork for the subsequent episodes. These details, like the distinctive license plates and the thematic use of music, contributed to the show's identity and helped establish the character of Frank Cannon within the context of the series. In the backdrop of the series, a blue Cadillac Coupe de Ville with a white top often held a subtle presence. Positioned strategically, it appeared adjacent to Cannon's car or nestled in driveways or streetside views. Beyond its subtle role, the show held another intriguing detail 476 minutes 3359, a personal phone number for the protagonist. Yet, what adds a twist of coincidence lies in the show's distributor, Viacom Enterprises. This same entity once held US TV rights to various films crafted by Canon Films. These nuances, while seemingly peripheral, added depth to the series, creating an intricate web of connections and subtle nods that seasoned the backdrop against which the story of Frank Cannon unfolded, solidifying the show's place in television history. Season 1 of the TV series Canon, which kicked off with 25 episodes, had a unique format. Each episode started with a brief scene before the opening credits, offering viewers a preview of the upcoming hour. However, the last four seasons, totaling 96 episodes, followed a more conventional approach, with no previews and the standard opening credits. This shift in presentation added an interesting dynamic to the show's structure. Cannon, the central character, had a distinctive habit that became a trademark element of the series. He frequently left his Lincoln parked with windows fully down and doors unlocked, a choice that consistently made him a target for the adversaries. This decision led to frequent acts of vandalism against his car and, notably, his car phone. It became a recurring theme, showcasing the constant challenges faced by the protagonist. Adding to the show's intrigue, the mobile number for the phone in Cannon's car was 213-191-9221. This number played a role in the unfolding events, contributing to the characters' interactions and challenges. The simplicity of this detail underscored the straightforward yet impactful nature of the series. 
There's unique aspects, from the varied episode format to Cannon's unconventional car habits, and the significance of his car phone number collectively shaped the identity of the 1971 TV series. The deliberate choices made in presentation and character traits served to distinguish Cannon and the landscape of television history. Frank Cannon's iconic red-orange coral short-sleeved shirt became a consistent and easily recognizable element in the series. The deliberate wardrobe choice, also featured in bright medium blue, not only saved on production costs but provided viewers with a distinct visual cue week after week. Originally a policeman, Cannon's character underwent a significant transformation after the tragic loss of his wife an infant son in a car accident. This personal tragedy propelled him to leave the force and become a top private investigator, mirroring a real-life parallel with actor Raymond Burr. Viacom, the longtime distributor of the show, later ventured into another successful project, producing a five-season series titled Jake and the Fat Man, also starring William Conrad. The connection between these projects adds an interesting layer to the legacy of the 1971 TV series, showcasing the enduring collaboration between key players in the television industry. These details, from Cannon's distinctive wardrobe to the personal backstory of the protagonist, and the subsequent projects involving key personnel, contribute to the multifaceted identity of the series. Each carefully chosen element, whether in costume or narrative, played a role in shaping the character and the broader context of the show, leaving an indelible mark on television history. In the realm of the 1971 TV series, the iconic character Frank Cannon had more than just a distinctive car and a penchant for leaving his Lincoln vulnerable. Delving into the nuances of Cannon's world, one interesting tidbit surfaces from the book Creating the Filmation Generation. In the 1972 to 1973 season, there was a plan to expand Cannon's presence into the animated realm with a spin-off titled Young Cannon. The rights were secured from Quinn Martin, but Fred Silverman at CBS didn't seal the deal. Beyond this animated endeavor, another facet of Cannon's character was his affinity for a pipe. In the initial seasons, Frank Cannon was portrayed as a pipe smoker, a trait mirrored in real life by the actor William Conrad. The pipe made intermittent appearances in the third and fourth seasons before fading away altogether, adding a subtle layer to Cannon's persona. Moreover, the series employed a late motif, possibly the tuba, as a recurring element in scenes. This low-toned musical choice cleverly alluded to Cannon's robust physique and deliberate, unhurried demeanor. The choice of instrument became a subtle yet effective means of underlining the character's characteristics throughout the show. These lesser-known details about canon not only expand the narrative, but also shed light on potential avenues that could have shaped the series differently. The proposed animated spin-off and the nuanced portrayal of canon's habits offer a glimpse into the creative decisions that influenced the show's trajectory, adding layers to the character and the world he inhabited. As we draw the curtains on this journey through the labyrinth of memories, I invite you to take a moment and reflect on the timeless echoes of the 1971 television masterpiece, a series that has left an indelible mark on the tapestry of our collective nostalgia. As you traverse the corridors of your own recollections, delve into the rich reservoir of experiences that this iconic show has woven into the fabric of your existence. What mysteries were unraveled as you sat on the edge of your seat, engrossed in each episode? What emotions were stirred as the characters unfolded their tales in the flickering glow of the screen? Perhaps it was the gripping narrative that held you captive, the nuanced performances that etched themselves into your soul, or the camaraderie of the cast that became a silent companion in the quiet hours of the night. Whatever it may be, those moments are yours, a treasure trove of memories waiting to be unearthed. Now, it's your turn. Share with us your most cherished recollections, your reflections on the impact this series has had on your life. Your stories are the threads that weave this narrative forward, connecting us across time and space through the shared love for a classic that transcends the confines of its era. Thank you for embarking on this nostalgic voyage with us. Your time and sentiments are the true testament to the enduring legacy of the 1971 television series. Until our paths cross again in the realm of reminiscence, keep those memories alive and let the spirit of canon continue to resonate in the corridors of your mind. With gratitude for your time and interest, 